All right, guys. <clears throat> what a beautiful fucking day here in the end times. You know, the <laughs> what we have about one beautiful day on Saturday. This is just what it looked like yesterday. <clears throat> I guess in the 10 day forecast, they have a little bitty peak of sunshine uh, scheduled for uh, Thursday, the day after tomorrow. Uh, they're showing a little bitty peak of sunshine before the rain returns on Friday. You know, I, I am really getting fucking sick and tired of this. So anyway, I am uh, being paid a visit by not one but two Doomer chicks. Uh, behind me in the car, two Doomer chicks have stopped by and want to go check out Bugs in a Jar Farm on this beautiful day. So, uh, came and met them in this shithole town of Owego, Owego, New York, and uh, heading back to Bugs in a Jar Farm on this gorgeous day uh, for a tour. You know, so just sitting here listening to the to NPR, who amazingly actually had a very intelligent uh, show. I was I was flabbergasted that we had some intelligent reporting about the sixth mass extinction so that wrapped up so listening to the headlines on this uh gloomy monday morning in the fall of 2021 that would be whatever monday october 4th uh <laughs> and and, and uh, let me see if i can remember by of course the uh, the, of course, one of the big stories is that fucking oil spill over there uh, off the coast of California. Gee, what a surprise. Another fucking oil spill. All those damn oil-coated birds. Here we go again. Jesus, how many more times are we going to go through this fucking story on this planet? Uh, so another day, another oil spill. And then, uh, I guess the biggest story on the planet, it was also the number one story I just barely had time to peruse Yahoo News today. Last night, uh, I, I was going to uh, <clears throat> mention this anyway, I watched this movie on Netflix called The Laundromat. I don't know how it got, went under my radar, it's Meryl Streep. And, uh, Antonio Banderas and this good cast. Uh, what the laundromat? I thought it was some weird uh, romantic comedy. It's not that at all. What the laundromat is is talking about the Panama Papers, and and it's actually very educational. If if you're uh, confused about what the hell money laundering is and the Panama Papers and all that. I highly, highly recommend it. Excellent movie, The Laundromat. It's both uh, entertaining and educational. So I never really got into the Panama Papers, you, you know, the no shit Sherlock Panama Papers. So I open up uh, the news today and uh, so what do they call this new uh, no shit Sherlock? Uh, it's raining in upstate New York headline. What do they call those paper? The Pandora Papers. You know, like Pandora's box. This Pandora's box. So here is the stunning revelation. The stunning revelation that, that has jaws just dropping all over this planet. Would you believe, would you believe that a bunch of rich elites have a bunch of money, tax-free money, squirreled away all over this planet. Un-fucking-believable that a bunch of slime bag billionaires have a bunch of money squirreled away all over planet Earth. Uh, I'm sure that they're not uh, paying one fucking penny of taxes on being uh, hidden away 
and, and all of these uh, damn, uh, the, 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 you know, these shell corporate, all, all, all the same shit the fucking Panama Papers were talking about, you know? And, and, and people, I guess with no fucking trace of irony, the, these very serious, uh, you know, like on NPR interviewing whoever, uh, like, is, isn't this fucking shocking that a bunch of fucking billionaires have a have a bunch of their fucking money hidden? Uh, good lord, that that is, that is a real shocker. Never would have thought of it. This is why we need the mainstream media and Netflix on the planet, because without the mainstream media and Netflix, we never would know. We never would be able to figure out on our own that a bunch of greedy, planet-eating, uh, fucking rich people uh, have more money than they want us to think they have. There you go. Thank you, mainstream media and Netflix, uh, for uh, talking about that. But of course, uh, the other big story on the planet is the this exciting subject of supply chains. How more and more of uh, of all of this uh, planet-eating shit that we can't get our hands on anymore. Uh, we have a new crisis. A new crisis in the supply chain. I learned a new term today in the mainstream media, diaper need. Diaper need, that's actually a term, diaper need. So I guess the latest uh, catastrophe uh, is a diaper shortage. That uh, people are, that these clueless fucking moron breeders, I guess all over the planet, uh, as the poop is piling up in, in, in their kids' disposable diapers, and now there's panic buying w with all of these clueless fucking moron uh, breeders, you know, hoarding diapers and uh, empty diaper shelves and uh, all of these fucking uh, little kids that never should have been born, you know, the poop fucking piling up in, in their goddamn diapers uh, because, they're, uh, because they're clueless fucking moron breeder parents can't find any fucking diapers. And uh, <clears throat> I, I, I'm, I'm sitting there reading this story that this morning about diaper need, you know, looking at all of these photos and, uh, you know, they're interviewing all, all of these goddamn parents uh, who are just in a total panic. I guess the price of a box of diapers has already, I don't know how many, uh, how many diapers are in a box. I've never opened a box of diapers. Have, have already gone from like $30 to $50. Dollars, fifty fucking dollars for a a box of uh, you know these disposable diapers that are clogging up uh, fucking septic tanks and rivers and oceans all over the goddamn planet. And so I, I, I'm reading this, and and it, and I loved it how this one woman, she was forced, she. She could not find any disposable diapers, so in an absolute panic, as the mainstream media says, she was forced to use reusable cloth diapers. Wow. She was forced, these supply chain crunches, forcing, forcing these poor parents to use reusable cloth diapers. I honestly don't know when were disposable diapers invented. So we've been around for what, 200,000 years, uh, you know, popping out these little 
planet nibbling uh, little shit factories. Uh, 200,000 years uh, of these fucking little planet nibbling uh, shit shoots uh, pissing and shitting all over the place. I'm thinking, when was it? About 30 years ago that these goddamn uh, that these goddamn disposable diapers uh, hit the market. Uh, my, I, I mean, I don't know the numbers. My guess is probably billions in the easily in the billions. Uh, but I, I mean, I really don't know because I don't know what percentage of clueless fucking moron uh, entitled uh, breeders even use these things. Uh, I assure you, uh, if you go down to uh, you know hang out in these little villages in Peru and Ecuador, my guess is that three fourths of the planet. Uh, particularly where three-fourths of the children being born on the planet be sub-Saharan Africa. My guess is that three-quarters of the clueless fucking moron uh, breeders on this planet are probably by, I'm guessing, one percent of uh, the disposable diapers being sold on the planet and which is another way of saying that probably 25 percent of clueless fucking moron uh, breeders uh, by 99 <clears> percent. <throat> yes, my heart really goes out I, uh, to these poor clueless fucking morons being forced to use reusable cloth diapers uh, just like the diapers that I would say every single, pretty much every single human being on this planet over the age of 30 uh, reusable cloth diapers including yours truly not that I have any direct memory of it, uh, but anyway, I am very proudly going to go to my grave. I've, you know, not that I'm going to have a tombstone, but I'm pretty sure my tombstone, since I told you I was sick, is already taken, will probably say he died not knowing how to tie a tie or change a diaper. I am now 62 years old. <clears throat> uh, I have never changed a diaper since the day I was born. And while I have had uh, other people tie ties around my neck, I have never, and this includes uh, years and years in the real estate business, uh, being a clueless moron real estate uh, agent, uh, I have never tied a tie around my neck since the day I was born, and sure as shit, never changed a diaper. So, uh, how my heart bleeds for all these clueless fucking morons uh, being forced into using reusable cloth diapers. You know, the, no one ever said the collapse of uh, global industrial civilization uh, wasn't going to be stinky. But bring it on. Anyway. So those are the uh, mainstream, metal, mainstream media headlines of the day today on this gloomy fucking depressing day. Oh, I do want to send out a shout out to Dulcinea. Uh, <laughs> Dulcinea, I honestly don't know if Dulcinea has ever changed a diaper. Darling, have you ever changed a diaper since the day you were born? 
Uh, my guess is Dulcinea has never changed a diaper since the day she was born, but I want to uh, congratulate <coughs> Dulcinea for uh, having her first video yanked down uh, for violating the YouTube community guidelines. You know, so uh, we lost the Kate Smith, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, we lost the Kate Smith personality, you know, the one always talking about how America is the land of free speech. Not sure who that was who we saw uh, come out on Saturday night. Uh, <laughs> Oh, darling, I love you. Uh, but Dulcinea has now joined the ranks of uh, being muzzled by the YouTube cops. So, uh, anyway, darling, uh, <laughs> may you uh, get more of your uh, YouTube videos yanked down for violating the YouTube community guidelines. Anyway, I gotta wrap up this rant and uh, get back to NPR. See what uh, see what N let's see what NPR is talking about now. Ill with the virus. Oh yes. N okay. Ill with the virus. We turn on. Let's see how many years into this. We turn on NPR uh, as the planet fucking burns. Uh, we turn on NPR for one second and we hear about how many folks are getting sick with Corona panic. I can tell a lot has changed on NPR. Uh, Jesus. I need to stop here and get a jack-o'-lantern, but I don't want to go jack-o'-lantern shopping in the rain. We'll have to come back and get us a jack-o'-lantern. Uh, to get out there and uh, carve a pumpkin while you still can. Oh my God.